Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to be using Protobuy to create these realistic animations for a search bar. Here the user can type anything, for example, San Francisco it will receive a response based on what the user types and also this delete icon will be visible and will allow the user to delete anything inside the search bar. As you can see, I already explored my designs from Figma to Protopy to make the video a little shorter. And the first thing that we need to do is to add the input field. We come here to text in the top left corner. We click in text, click on input, and now we can drag this cursor to create our placeholder. We can put it inside our search bar, and also it will be easier for us if we put it inside the the container so it will, that would allow us to center it very quickly by clicking here now let's add a little formatting we can change the text of the placeholder to search by city change the field color to pure white and also I, I would like to change the font that comes by default because i don't like it so I'll, let's change it to poppins and let's move this a little bit to the left and there you go. Let's see how it looks in the preview screen. And now we can add, we can enter any text that we want here. Now let's focus on the delete icon. And as you remember from the recording at the beginning of the video, when the user types something inside the search bar, these icons should be visible. When there's no text inside the search bar, these shouldn't be visible. And also this icon allows the user to delete everything that is inside the search bar. So to add the first condition, we need a trigger and that trigger is the tag. The tag allowed us to look for any change in a, com in a specific component inside our design. So with the component that we want to look at are is the, the input field and we want to look at the text inside the input field. Now that we are looking at this, we need to add a condition because when the, there is text available, we want the icon to be visible. When there's no text, we want it to be invisible. So we look for condition, we have it input, then we change the X to text. And as is seen here, we have when text is equal to none or where is there, there is no text, we want the response to be opacity for the delete icon to be zero. And now the other condition, when there, we look for the input field here again, changes the text. And now when the text is different from none, or in other words, when there is text inside the input field, we want the response to be opacity 100% for the delete icon. And before testing this in the previous screen, let's change this to the initial state to zero because we don't have any text at the beginning. So now let's go to preview. We cannot see the, the, the icon. As soon as we start typing, we see the icon. So now we delete it, should disappear and it's working well. Now let's also add the the option to click that icon and delete everything inside the, the input field. And for that, we're gonna need another trigger. We're gonna need tap. And we need, when the user taps the delete icon, we want to reset everything that is inside the, the input field. For that, we click on the reset response, input, and that should work. Now let's go back to preview. We type something, we tap on the delete icon, and it resets everything. Now let's work on the search result. We want this text that is now saying city to change depending on the on what the user inputs. So for that, first we're gonna need to create a variable. So we come here in the variable menu, we click on the plus icon. Here we have two options, but for us doesn't matter because we only have one scene that we click for. We click the first one. Then we have three different type of variables that we can choose. We have number, text, and color. And in this case, we want this to be a text. Now that we have the variable, we need to create a, a, a trigger to make this receive the what the user inputs. And we're going to be looking again at the text inside the input so we can reuse this detect trigger that we already have because it's looking at that element. 
but we need another response. And this time we're gonna use assign. And assign is a response that work exclusively with variables. So now we need to look for the variable that we just created here. And the value that we want to assign depends on the input. So we click on plus here, we look for the input element. Then we click on dot and look for text here. Now the variable should be receiving the, the text inside the input. And to see if that's working, let's click on debug icon here. And now let's go to preview and every time everything I type here should be reflect on the on the green screen. And as we can see, that's working pretty well. OK, now that we know that our variable is taking the right value, we don't need this debug option again, so we can turn it off. And now what we need to do is to take the value of the variable and reflect it in the text that we see in the search result. And for that, we need to add another trigger. We're going to use the tag again, but this time we're going to be looking at the variable because every time the variable changes its value, we want this to be reflected on the text. And the response that we're going to need is text. So here we check out the layer that we want. We want it to, to be the city. And the value depends on the formula. And this formula is just our variable. So now, if I go back to the previous screen, everything I type should be reflect on the text there. And it's working. Now we can also add a little formatting here. So we come back to the formula here and we use we can use uppercase function. And depending of what the user types uh, or the format of the user or the user types here, the result will be always in uppercase. Cool. Okay, and now we only want this search result to be visible when the user types something. So we need to add another trigger. But since we are going to be looking again at the text inside the input, we can reuse again our detect trigger that we are where we are looking at the text inside the input. And we already have the conditions for when the tag there is text and when there, there is no text. So we just need to add some a new response here. So when there is no text inside the input, we want the opacity of the CD component to be, let's look for CD here, and we want the opacity to be zero. And when there is text inside the input, we want the opacity of the CD field again, so we look CD, to be 100%. And before testing on the previous screen, let's change it to the, the initial state to be opacity zero because we don't have any text at the beginning. And we come here to the preview. As soon as I start typing something, I see a search result and it's working pretty well. So now we have our search bar with realistic animation that will make our user have a more realistic feeling when they are testing our product. That's all I have for this video. I hope you learned something useful today. I believe that these animations for the search bar are a really good example for how to use the combination of the tag and conditions. As you can see here, we use it a couple of times. And if you want to learn more about Protopite and Figma, see you on my next video.